Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment, please, and sign in so we know that you are watching. And remember to include all the names of those that are watching with you this morning. Let's get going with our opening worship. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, 
you great sea creatures and all the deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and all flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great First reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 5. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, 
multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those inflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 1. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, Write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp, two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not there with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hi kids, it's Deaconess Kim with the children's message for you. Now have you ever heard something that sounded unbelievable? Here are some examples for you. Did you know that ketchup used to be sold as medicine for when you were sick? Did you know that slugs have four noses? They're not like ours, but they can still smell. And did you know that the opposite sides of a normal die always add up to seven? That all sounds pretty incredible, right? But it's all true, you can believe me. Now in today's Bible story, we're talking about Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples. Thomas heard some unbelievable news from the other disciples. Do you know what they told him? They told him that Jesus was alive. Jesus, the one who'd been arrested and crucified a few days ago. The man who was dead and buried in a tomb. To Thomas, it sounded too unbelievable. How could Jesus possibly be alive? So Thomas said, unless I see, I won't believe. Now we sometimes call Thomas Doubting Thomas because he didn't believe what the other disciples said. But can we really blame him? The idea that a person could come back from the dead? It sounds incredible, unbelievable. And for a normal person by themselves, it is impossible. There's good news in this story for Thomas and for us. Jesus came to see the disciples again and Thomas got to see him. Then Jesus said something really special. He said, blessed are the ones who have not seen and yet have believed. Who did Jesus mean? He means us. We believe in Jesus, even though we've never seen him with our eyes. We believe because God gives us faith. Faith means we believe, even if we can't see something. We believe in Jesus. We believe that God loves us. And we believe that someday we'll get to see Jesus face to face, just like Thomas did. Do you know what happened to Thomas after he saw Jesus? Thomas said, my Lord and my God. He understood now who Jesus was and he believed. Thomas had faith because he saw Jesus. We have faith because God gives us the Holy Spirit and helps us believe in Jesus. So let's thank God for that this week. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for giving me faith to believe in Jesus, even if I can't see him. In Jesus' name, amen.
To you, online viewers chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in His resurrection, victory, power, grace, and peace be to you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is our Easter victory. And on the hinges of East, just celebrating Easter last week, we are still hopefully celebrating, still hopefully relishing in that understanding that our Lord and Savior is alive, that He is with us each and every single day. So how is that going, your Easter celebration? How do we keep that victory that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, alive? See, if we're honest, it isn't always easy, right? Especially when we still have to face our battles in this life. Sometimes I wonder, though, if this is not where we often go wrong. Facing our battles alone without Jesus. Sure, in the leftover excitement of Easter, He is risen. Hopefully you responded, he is risen indeed, alleluia. But in the excitement of Easter, perhaps we can just be intellectually engaged in knowing that we are not alone. Yeah, we tell ourselves that Jesus is here, but living in Easter hope is not an intellectual thing. If it were, then we just simply would need one Easter celebration and it would be all over. We would be, well totally convinced in our minds that this is our state of being. But that's never really how it works. Remember, the Easter witnesses, Mary, she sees Jesus but doesn't know it's Jesus until Jesus actually says her name when he calls her by name. And then remember the two disciples on the road to Emmaus? They walk with Jesus for a long time. And it isn't until after the breaking of the bread that Jesus is revealed to them and they know that it's Jesus that has been with them the whole time. You see, if our Easter is simply an intellectual exercise, then we simply leave Jesus back at the empty tomb. We don't want this to become an intellectual exercise. We want to embrace and understand how that is working in our lives, how Jesus is truly with us. You see, we rob ourselves of Jesus' words to us, I am with you always, when we intellectualize Easter. Stop doubting and become a Thomas. Learn to live in Jesus. When Thomas knows that it's Jesus, he confesses this great statement my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. You see, this is a pretty heavy statement because a Lord means you're in relationship with something, that you are connected. You see, 
going forward from this point, and even in other sections of the gospel, we know a little bit about Thomas's personality. So I suggest that we change Thomas's name from Doubting Thomas to Thomas the Crazy. <laughs> now, I don't think that I'm that far out of line, because remember the scenario in John chapters 10 and 11. Jesus makes the claim that he and the Father are one. He basically claims to be God. Well, he is, of course. Yes, I get that. We know that for sure. But the Pharisees are outraged by Jesus' claim. They pick up stones. Now, they're not like picking up stones like they're hired to pick up stones out of a field or something along the lines of that. They're going to put them in a pile. They're going to kill Jesus with these stones for what he said. So Jesus does manage to escape, and they get away. And then remember, they get word that Lazarus is sick. Jesus knows he's sick. And there's a little confusion about whether he's going to recover or not. And Jesus finally, flatly has to tell them, Lazarus is dead. They don't want Jesus to go back. Remember, Lord, what happened last time. If you go back, they may finish the job. Stone you to death. But Jesus says, we're going. We're going back because, well, Jesus is the one that's going to lay down his life, and he's going to do it on his timing, and he knows all that's true. Now, they don't. But what does St. Thomas say? He says this, let us also go that we may die with him. See what I mean? We should call Thomas, Thomas the crazy. Apparently Thomas is a pretty good motivational speaker because they do go. And they go because this is part of the Easter story. Jesus dies on his terms. Jesus brings back others to life on his terms too, just as he does with Lazarus when he calls Lazarus back from the dead. And Thomas was willing to give his life. It didn't matter. He was all in. He was following Jesus. As crazy as that sounds, crazy Thomas has swallowed the Kool-Aid, right? He is all in with Jesus. And we should be too. Even if it's death, we should follow Jesus. See, this is the Easter story. The Easter story is telling it in the way we live our lives. The way we take on our daily battles. You see, we face those battles in memory of those biblical figures that fought their battles before us. We see those battles, one, in the witnesses of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all but St. John gave their lives too. Or even in the Easter victory stories portrayed in stories like this one by C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia. One of my favorite scenes in this particular movie is, is when the epic battle comes together. Aslan is dead. The lion is dead. He is, of course, the Christ figure, and he does, once again, come back to life. But there's this epic battle. And who is leading this epic battle? Well, King Peter. King Peter is the one that's going to lead the army into battle against the white witch, the forces of evil. And we get this great depiction because Edmund, Peter's brother, who has been pretty obstinate against him throughout most of the movie, throws in his support behind Peter. But yet we have this centaur, Aureus, the Thomas of the movie, the one that says, I will go with you to death, Peter. And we have that depiction right here in this little video clip. Are you with me? To the death. For Narnia! And for Ansel! 
ultimately, in this epic battle, it is Aslan the lion, the resurrected lion that defeats the white witch, Satan, right? Sin, death, and the power of the devil. And not only that, he breathes life back into all of those that were slain. The new and restored Narnia is back in place, which too foreshadows what we have to come. Unfortunately, this isn't our reality yet, but this certainly is our hope. The hope that keeps us moving forward. So when we have bad news that comes our way, when we have sorrowful news in this world where it seems like it's falling apart, we know that the victory is already won. And then we can be like Thomas, ready to go into battle. His words, they are our words too. My Lord and my God. As with our battle, it is Jesus, the one that fights for us. It is Jesus, our victor, the one who keeps things moving forward. Don't go it alone. Why bother going alone? Confess with Thomas that Jesus is your Lord and your God. Because in that power, we can go forward to face any battle that is thrown our way by that white witch Satan in our lives. We too can be strong. We too can be faithful, even if it means death. Because even in death, we know we still have the victory in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. For this week's announcements, this Tuesday, April 26th, we will find out who our new vicar for the 2022-2023 year will be. If you want to watch Concordia Seminary's call day service to see our new vicar, the information on how to tune in is located in the Team Jesus News. Also, next Sunday, May 1st, during our Adult Education Hour, or May 2nd at 6.30 p.m., the Generations Ministry of St. Stephen is bringing in Terry Gertz from the LCMS Foundation to present Transferring the Blessings in the Fellowship Hall. Be sure to join us in person to find out how you can plan ahead for your family's needs. If you are interested but cannot come, contact the church office for resources we can share. Finally, our mission team is raising money for their June trip to West Virginia. They're selling pulled pork smoked by our member Jason Henke. You have one week left to place your order, as orders are due by May 1st. The pork will be ready for pickup on May 15th. You can place orders at the Connection Center on site or by contacting the church office. And as always, to find out more about events happening here at St. Stephen, check this week's issue of Team Jesus News. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with our confession and absolution. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for He indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent His Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we want to just continue to pray for George Hauser and his battle with cancer. Continued prayers for Kendra McClaskey. She has several health issues and some testing coming back, and so just guidance for the doctors that are caring for her to figure out what's going on. So just prayers there. Prayers for Natalie. It's a friend of Mike and Carrie Snyder's that's battling cancer. Prayers of Thanksgiving for Jim Scarrow's grandmother, Carrot, baptized on Monday, Thursday. She's 85 years old. So praise God. Also just uh, prayers for Ethan and Ren Luft and Matthew Lynch as they continue their a journey through the seminary. Matthew will be getting his call this uh, Tuesday, and also prayers for our vicar, uh, the one that will be coming, and just all of our seminarians too, and deaconesses and all those uh, at the SEM. Prayers for uh, Rachel, our deputies. Uh, her husband passed away suddenly this past Monday, and so just prayers for Rachel during this very difficult time. Rejoicing that our Savior's tomb is empty and that he has swallowed up death forever, let us pray for the Church of our risen Lord and for everyone in need. O Holy Spirit, light divine, keep in faith all of us whom you have baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus, including those celebrating baptismal birthdays, Jared, Ralph, Josh, Colton, Stuart, Wren, Chris, and Jacob. Strengthen them and us to resist the devil's temptations and fill us with Easter life so that the world can see your love through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Savior Jesus, Lord of your church, Continue to pour out your Spirit upon us so that we go forth boldly to proclaim your love to the nations. Especially we pray this day for our church body and the exciting call day events of this week. Prepare all congregations receiving a new pastor, vicar, or deaconess to be supportive and encouraging. We especially look forward to the victor you have prepared for us. Calm the fears of these candidates and families with your peace so that they know and trust in your plan for their lives and the ministries you entrust to them. We rejoice with Ethan and Ren Luft and Matthew Lynch as they continue their journey through the seminary. Help us to support and encourage them in our words, prayers, and financial giving. We look forward to seeing how the Lord will use them for service in His church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you promised to wipe away tears from all faces, so we beg you to be with the sick, the injured, the aged, and everyone in need. Especially we pray for George, for Kendra, for Natalie, and for Jim Scarrow's grandmother, Carrot. Continue to provide healing and strength for them. Sustain and comfort those that are mourning the death of loved ones, especially our deputy Rachel and her family at the loss of her husband. 
We pray that you would just give them the peace that surpasses all our understanding, remind them of your great love for them in Christ Jesus, and that you are indeed working all things for your good purposes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, guide the leaders of our land and the leaders of all countries. Give them your wisdom so that they use their authority to protect the helpless and care for all people. Bring an end to all hatred and war, and give us concord and peace. Watch over those who serve in our military, our law enforcement, all first responders, medical workers, and their families. Keep them from all harm and bring them home safely to their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. So we rejoice with Nick and Bree as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him the Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown Oh